Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, All In Crypto here and welcome back guys for another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. I'm wishing you all a wonderful week and a happy Friday and if you are new to this channel and finding yourself on my videos for the first time today, don't forget to check out that subscribe button because we drop an update just like this one every single day at 1pm UK time to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space but also the broader markets. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. Today is a significant day for the broader markets as we have non-farm payroll numbers rolling in. And of course, there is going to be an effect on the dollar and its relative strength. So the Dixie chart, which of course is adversely correlated with Bitcoin. And this week has been a jam-packed week for data, not just from a kind of monetary point of view um, and a kind of economic point of view, but also from a company earnings point of view. And we're going to be starting the video off by looking at the likes of Meta. They had a really uh, profitable earnings and they've jumped up massively. Uh, and we're going to be looking at some data that shows almost 4 billion people, so nearly half of the world's population, used either Facebook, Instagram or WhatsApp at least once a month during Q4 2023, so the last quarter of 2023. This is the technological world that we are moving towards and it's only going to amplify and this is why America is the powerhouse that it is because it has these companies under their control. Uh, and ultimately, you know, there's a lot of government involvement with these companies. The government wouldn't have allowed them to get to where they have and the power that they have if they didn't have some sort of a control over them. If you look at why China doesn't allow these companies in there and why we don't allow Chinese companies uh, in the West, you know, it has a lot to do with the kind of power that the techno lords have over us. So we will be uh, looking at that. We're going to be getting into Bitcoin's price action. We have looked at the potential squaring up of this right shoulder and it being a lot more shallow as we expected than a lot of people I think were uh, looking at. Uh, we'll be looking at the Dixie, of course, Dixie rolling over at this point. Remember, our short-term downtrend is still intact for the Dixie. We want the Dixie to roll for Bitcoin to do and risk generally to do well. You know, stocks are included in that, precious metals are included. That's going to be interesting to see how they act with non-farm payroll. We'll be looking at Bitcoin dominance. We'll bring up Chainlink, which was something we gave a price prediction for that I think a lot of people were very happy with. New all-time highs coming for Chainlink. That is progressing in regards to the path that we've set for it. We'll relate this to Bitcoin dominance uh, and Bitcoin relatively. And then, of course, we've been diving into non-farm payrolls and talking a little bit about bank failures that I think pe have people rather worried um, but this has been, there's always worry in markets. There's always multiple things. Markets are multi-levered. You know, there's lots of things going on at once and we really try and simplify them all down in these daily market updates. So let's start things off. This was very interesting. So almost 4 billion people used either Facebook, Instagram or WhatsApp at least once a month during Q4 2023. Uh, that means almost 50% of the world's population uses a meta product at least once a month. And you can see based on yesterday's earnings, Meta has done absolutely spectacular. And let's actually go over to the Meta chart because we weren't just talking about being long crypto last year and, and assessing a fundamental change that was signaled by a bullish divergence that we had here. We've covered all that to death, but we were also longing things like Meta. Many of our stocks actually made their targets. Of course, this was Microsoft, kind of our golden child. Uh, and altcoins and crypto is really just down at this kind of basing phase and breaking out. Um, but even something like the S&P is well on its way to our target. We do think this probably is going to get hit in the next couple of months. Uh, and you had the likes of the NASDAQ, which of course made a, a very early on target. But Meta, look at this. And actually another company that we're very long on and being criticized for is the likes of Amazon that we think is going to $260. Now, why is all this relevant to the cryptocurrency space? Well, because you can weigh the cryptocurrency space up, not just against the dollar chart, but also against the likes of the S&P. That's my uh, Bitcoin for your cycle theory rainbow chart. Sorry about that, guys. And we looked at the potential for this right shoulder to be in. Um, so Bitcoin and Bitcoin can kind of be a barometer for the crypto space generally is in an uptrend against these other markets, not just the SPY, the NASDAQ, and of course, gold, which is all going to be affected um, going into non-farm payroll today, which we're going to come on to in a second. Remember the plan for Bitcoin, guys. This is our broader now inverse head and shoulders. We had a smaller one that took us a 30, um, sorry, 42K. If you look at where a lot of the consolidation on the short term is occurring, it's all occurring around this key level of significance. And you can see just how we're acting. There's a potential smaller neckline here that's going to take us up to 55K. And that's potentially the end of this right shoulder. Now, there is two paths. Of course, we looked at the potential for an ABC correction, but that was going to be based on better than expected data and ultimately a stronger dollar, which we haven't seen. And we did expect, you know, if you look at why this key technical level up here, and we'll zoom out, 
all occurred. Not only was it a key technical level signaling resistance and a pullback, there was data to support this by the rumor sell the news event with the ETF and also macro headwinds based on inflation. Inflation's coming back in line. We saw that with the EU, although calls were a little bit sticky. Um, and ultimately, we did say that you're going to get better than expected dollar cross currency economy data um, that's going to lean on the dollar a little bit. And of course, non-farm payrolls today is going to be very interesting. Sorry, I've got the, the smaller version of the uh, of the chart up here. So this could be the right shoulder. If this gets hit, you're looking at a run to 150K. This aligns with our broader thesis on the dollar of it coming down to the lower band of this channel, which is also very supported by the Fed funds rate and where that's at and where it's likely going and projected. You know, you had Bailey come out yesterday in the... In the um, we're putting log on the on the Bitcoin chart, come out yesterday and say that he's not, you know, he's, he's open to rate cuts at this point. And actually, Jerome Powell basically didn't say he's thinking about going further ahead. He said, look, we're not going to cut in March, but, you know, we are forecasting cuts of, uh, of somewhat. So we want the dollar to roll. The adverse effect to that is going to be, of course, Bitcoin. Uh, and you can see the kind of turning that's going on here in regards to dropping down the timeframes. You know, weekly, we know the correlation, guys. Uh, dollar up, Bitcoin down. Not sure why it's doing this. Um, and now you ran into resistance for Bitcoin, which is at a key technical level, as the dollar gained strength based on kind of macro news. And now it is looking like it's wanting to roll. And you can see on the shorter time frames, if we put this on auto, you know, as the dollar starting to top, Bitcoin's finding its feet and that right shoulder could be in. So the plan is very much still in play. Looking at Bitcoin dominance, we do expect this to roll. We think this downtrend or this uptrend, sorry, that's been uh, supported by this grind line is now, has now broken. Retest up to it, very harsh slam down, a little bit of strength, and this is going to roll ultimately in the fashion that it does with a bull and bear market. It goes up in a bear market, down in a bull market. This is going to support altcoins, and of course, we're looking at a basket of altcoins and actually giving price predictions for a number of altcoins, and our chain link price prediction is coming true. This inverse head and shoulders pattern plays out time and time again in the markets, and we've shown you a number of examples. We'll come back onto this in just a second in regards to injective protocol. Can you see this? And we've got a higher target for this. And actually, there's a bit of a short-term setup, potentially an injective. Uh, and a number of others. We've even shown you analogies with the uh, Nikkei over... Uh, and I'll try and find the um, index here. Can we use this? Yeah, we can. If we go on a monthly chart, because this is a really big pattern. This is how markets move up and down. You know, we're one of the few people to talk about this. Uh, just in the same manner that we were longing stocks based on this exact pattern. You know, everything's coming to a head. Everything looks good. Gold, I think, is on the precipice of really rocking and rolling. It's doing a kind of microcosm here of what it did over here with this little wind up. It will eventually push through that. You know, we have targets for 3,000 gold. Remember, Bitcoin's in an uptrend against gold. And, of course, the stock market that we expect to do uh, very, very well. Let's move on now to a little bit of economic data. So the plan's still in place, guys. Uh, obviously, we've been having a lot of data thus far. And today, of course, is non-farm payroll. Now, I think this is going to come under expectations, potentially. The expectations are 187,000. The prior one was 216,000, which was a massive beat. I think this could be slightly under, which is in line with it, the ADPs. And this is what I mean by that weaker dollar. We want the dollar to roll to see our kind of prophecy uh, play out. We call it a prophecy. I, I guess that's probably not the right word. Our technical analysis uh, predictions play out. So a little bit of stagnation. You know, got things like Chainlink that are setting up. You know, if you look at how we finished last year, we literally had altcoins that were up 200 plus percent. And we finished the year out very positively for what for most was a very indecisive year and a, and a, and a hard one to get right. Um, you know, we're not saying we're amazing, but we expect better returns this year. If you want to find out what I'm buying and where and how and, and why we're buying certain things, do consider becoming a patron because you'll unlock my full portfolio and get access to me on a weekly basis. Uh, twice a week, we do meetings and we sort of uh, look at sectors that we want to invest in, so on and so forth. So the plan is still very much in play. And I think it's worth me perhaps mentioning a little bit about what's going on with the banking sector, um, because this is worrying people somewhat. This is bank failures by year. And you can see in 2023, it was massive. We had a bank fail not that long ago in the US. We've also got a couple of banks in Asia failing. It's because of the big debt burden. Uh, and ultimately, you know, I woke up this morning just thinking to myself, and I always think this to myself, how amazing is it that Bitcoin came about when it did and has been so right? And this guy called Satoshi or woman or CIA, whatever, I don't know, um, created Bitcoin in 2008, got things so right, and now it's been adopted by BlackRock and everybody in between, and people are looking at it as a genuine investment. It's almost too good to be true, and I've always been taught when something's too good to be true, you need to question the origins and the kind of... Um, intent behind it you know i don't believe that the u.s governments would have allowed or any government would have allowed bitcoin to get this far unless 
they didn't see it as a genuine threat to topple them over and the powers that be. Um, which is a little bit of food for thought. I'm going a little bit off topic here, but the plan is still in play, guys. Subscribe to this channel. You know, we have been exceptional when it comes to the markets, quite frankly. And anybody that's watched me over the past years will know that. Um, you know, we don't get everything right, but we get uh, more right than we get wrong. And ultimately, just waiting for things to set up. We have technical reasons. We have macro reasons. We've got fundamental reasons and everything in between to expect this to go to where it's going to. Um, and yeah, that's really all I've got for you guys. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching the videos. As always, I don't give you guys a shout out enough. You know, I really do appreciate all the support and the love that we get. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed, guys. You know, this channel is only going one way and that's up. We plan on becoming one of the largest crypto channels that there is because we provide real, genuine information on a daily basis, day in, day out, that will help you guys navigate this market and hopefully do well out of it. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. If you've enjoyed the content, like us, appreciate it as a comment. And I look forward to seeing you all in tomorrow and this evening's video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.